Hi, my name is David Tu, and in this video, we're going to show you how to use a thermal imaging camera. For the, our video, we're going to actually be using this one from Agilent Technologies, and we'll just show you the basics of how to read the display and how to play around with uh, getting different um, measurements and different co colors on your thermal imaging camera. So here we have the thermal display view, and what I wanted to show off was a few things that are going to be of interest to you if you're using a thermal camera. So in the center there, you see a center dot. And whatever that center dot is pointing at, you'll actually be able to measure the temperature. So if I point at this hot cup of water, it's looking like it's about 41 degrees Celsius. But then if I point it at this cold cup of water, it's now sitting at about 1, maybe 2 degrees Celsius. So that center dot's going to be really important for you. Then on the right-hand side, you see the uh, color scale for the different temperatures and uh, for heat and, and cold. So uh, it, this is a rainbow display right now. So at the very hot end, you'll see red or white, even for super white hot. And then at the very cold end, you'll see blue. So as the camera uh, auto ranges, I'm going to scroll around to see a few different things. Here I have my laptop, and you can see the red portions are a little um, hotter. You know, my laptop seems to be hot in the middle. And I think that's about 30 degrees or so at the center. If I wanted to, I can actually look at the walls. And you can kind of see my reflection on a wall uh, picture. And it actually is reflecting that heat from, from that glass. If I go up a little bit higher, you can actually see the 2x4 supports in the walls. And they actually look like cold spots on the wall. So you can use a thermal camera for um, finding out where your studs are. Same if I go to the ceiling. You can see that the air conditioning vent right now is a lot colder than the sub, uh, surrounding ceiling. So um, that's just uh, one part of the uh, display. So let's actually um, do a couple other things, like uh, changing the uh, color modes or uh, changing the view mode, which uh, will have us uh, do maybe a picture picture or uh, fusion mode. So let's go ahead and do that. Right now we have a multicolor scheme, which uh, shows hot and cold in varying degrees of color. But if we actually just want to uh, see what's hot and cold, it's better to go to a monochromatic uh, color scheme. So I'm just going to press the center button here and uh, go into my main menu and press imaging, color palette, and just select a monochrome color scheme. Let me get back out of that scheme. So now, if I actually uh, point at my hot and cold cups of water, you can see that hot is uh, very bright yellow, whereas the cold is more of a uh, darker uh, black color. So that's uh, something else to, to help you visualize your temperatures. Yet another nice feature is the ability to see your thermal image in different views. So you can actually press this camera button here and cycle through the different views. With this thermal imaging camera, you actually have the normal IR lens, which is this big thing right here. And you can actually change your focus by turning this knob. And uh, in addition to that, we actually have a normal uh, camera lens, uh, which is this here. So if I go back and take a look, we can actually see the normal camera view. But if I cycle through and press this camera button again, I have this nice picture-in-picture -picture view where I'm actually looking at thermal uh, images uh, within a normal picture view. So if I close this laptop, you can see that the two cups of water are uh, hot and cold. Um, but if I press the, thermal, the camera view again, now I've got more of a blend mode, or they, we call it a fusion mode. And if I focus it correctly, you can actually align it or misalign it. And so now you can actually see uh, what you're shooting at versus just a purely thermal view, which is this next but, uh, button here. So this is the purely thermal view that we have. And if you actually turn out to be in a darker location, uh, you might want a flashlight or a torchlight. So you can actually turn that on by pressing this little star button here. And you can see. On the front there, you can see the torch light is on. Or if you are pointing at something that's kind of far away, or you're in the thermal view and you don't know what you're looking at, you can actually hold this star button down. And you can, 
we actually have a, a little laser pointer that will help you um, point out what you're shooting uh, your camera at and help you identify what your uh, target is. In addition to that, another useful feature for some thermal cameras is the ability to zoom. So for this camera, I'm just going to press this, uh, or I'm going to hold down this uh, camera button again, bring up my zoom menu, and I'm actually going to zoom in just by pressing this right button. So if we look down at our cups of water again, we can actually zoom in just on that hot water, even though I'm not moving my feet. So with this camera, you actually have a, up to a 4x zoom, and that's going to allow you to see a lot more detail, especially if you're like in a home inspection uh, application where some of the, your stuff is going to be really high up or really far away where you can't reach it with a, a ladder. So this, is, this kind of feature is going to be um, useful for you. The primary feature of these types of cameras are the ability to take still images and then uh, do some editing of those images as well. So this isn't a video camera, it's more of a still image camera. So in order to take a picture, all I have to do is press this trigger button that is nicely put right in front of your index finger. So all I have to do is press that trigger button, and let me point out those hot cups of water again. Take a picture, and we'll, uh, let's look at some editing. So if I actually want to edit those pictures, I'm just going to press this play button. Now I've got that image that I just took. And I can look at the purely infrared version, or it actually saved a normal camera view, so a visual spectral version as well. So that's going to be really useful to determine what you're actually shooting, not just in the thermal view. If I wanted to, I can actually go back and add some tags. to that video. So I can edit tags, and I can put in a note tag, and just type in some letters, or whatever I really want to put in there. So um, that's going to allow you to tag your uh, images, your thermal images, with either a real view or actually some notes so you can go back and make your report. So, before we end up, let's go actually do some uh, kind of fun things with our videos. So I've got a fun little demonstration here. So I actually have uh, two little picture frame things that I've made. Uh, one's with a black uh, plastic trash bag that I just picked up at the normal uh, market. And you can see that it's an uh, opaque uh, bag. You cannot see me through it at all. So in the visual spectrum, it's actually, um, you can't see through it. But uh, on this other picture, picture frame, I have a, uh, another piece of plastic, and this one is clear and you can see me pretty well. However, these things act very differently in the thermal spectrum. So let's go ahead and switch over to the thermal spectrum and uh, see what these uh, picture frames look like. All right, now we're in the thermal mode of our uh, thermal camera, and you can actually see uh, I still have my clear sheet here. Um, you can't see that in the thermal view, but if, if I uh, pass this sheet in front of my face, Check out what happens. You can no longer see me. So maybe that's uh, surprising to you, but let's go ahead and check out this other black plastic bag here. So with the black plastic bag, you might be able to start seeing my hand already. But if I put it in front of my face, you can tell that uh, it actually doesn't look like anything is in front of me at all. But in the visual spectrum, it actually is a black plastic bag. So to prove that, let's go ahead and go back to our visual mode. And so here, it's that black plastic bag right in front of me. I didn't swap it out or anything like that. And here's my other plastic uh, frame. So that's a cool demonstration to, just to see how different a thermal spectrum is than a visual sp uh, spectrum. If we go back to that thermal uh, spectrum, I just wanted to point out that if you are ever being chased by a predator from the movies, you might want to use this type of plastic, which is a polystyrene plastic, just so that that predator won't be able to catch you with his uh, thermal vision. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching.